My name is Chris, and today we're going to tackle our constant enemy, Static. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. It may come as a surprise to some of you that the biggest war we wage for clean and clear playback of records is not in fact dirt, but static electricity. While dirt is certainly a leading factor in unwanted performance from vinyl record, the vast majority of it is easily wiped away with a microfiber cloth, carbon fiber brush, or one of the many various cleaning machines on the market, both expensive and affordable alike. The one problem that can persist though, even through these cleaning solutions, is static. Yes, a record that has been wet clean will likely have no static at all, but just the simple act of playing that record can bring static right back into the fold. And let's face it, none of us have time to wet clean a record every time we want to put it on the turntable. We'd never sit and actually enjoy our music. So what can be done? Well, right now the perennial favorite is this, the Milti Pro Zero Stat 3 Anti-Static Gun. Ranging in price, this tool can be found anywhere from $76 to as much as $125 depending on the seller. No small change item to be sure, but almost all would agree that this is an absolute must for anyone even remotely serious about wanting good sounding playback from their records. So what does this thing do? Well, according to the verbiage on the box, the Zero Stat 3 produces negative and positive ions that couple with the positive and negative static charges on an object's surface. Effectively, it neutralizes them. So in theory, you shoot this gun at records and you get rid of static. Looking around the internet, you'll find a host of different opinions on how to use and interpret the deceptively simple instructions, which read, and I quote, hold the Milti Pro Zero Stat at 300 millimeters, 12 inches, away from the object. Squeeze the trigger slowly. A powerful stream of positive ions projects over a spread of about 400 millimeters, 16 inches. Release it slowly, and negative ions are produced. Zero Stat lasts for at least 50,000 trigger operations and requires no power supply, batteries, or refills. Fairly straightforward enough, right? Wrong. Well, wrong according to the audiophile community that, if anything, can needlessly complicate what would otherwise be a relatively simple conversation. There are so many threads on forums, reviews on blogs, and videos on the internet that you'd think we were discussing the best way to colonize Mars to save the future of mankind. So what is the right way to use this thing, and more importantly, does it work? That's what I aim to find out. As far as I'm aware, no one has actually tested with a measured scientific approach the efficacy of the zero stat. I'm not counting the toilet paper static and balloon tests found here on YouTube, while those seem to show a positive result, I'm aiming for actual numbers. For all the advice on how best to use this tool, or even the criticism of other people how they are doing it wrong, I've yet to see any hard evidence that not only does this tool work, but that their method is the best. Then how do we go about testing it? With this. This is the Simcoe FMX002 electrostatic field meter, and it has one job. To read how much static electricity is on an item. That's it. It is a quality professional tool, and you can probably guess what's coming next. We're going to take a few brand new out of the package records to see not only how much static they have, but what the zero stat can help do to eliminate that static. I've compiled a short list of the most popular methods of using the zero stat, and we're going to try those as well as the brief and simple instructions on the box. We'll go one album at a time to eliminate unnecessary editing, and I'll log the results. In the interest of efficiency, I've opened all of the jackets beforehand, but I have not yet removed the records from their sleeves, with the exception of one. I'll explain that when the time comes. Also, much of this will be sped up as to avoid boring you to tears, but rest assured, I am squeezing the trigger at the proper second intervals as instructed. First up is what I'm calling the triangle method. Its instructions are as follows. While the record is on the turntable, but not spinning, I am to imagine it having a triangular shape, the spindle hole being the center. Hold the zero stat approximately 12 inches away from the record surface and slowly squeeze the trigger at each of the three corner points of the record. Take about two seconds to squeeze and two seconds to release at each of these locations. Then, putting the zero stat at the center of the record, slowly squeeze the trigger for the fourth and final time. Then point the zero stat away from the record and release the trigger. Apparently, these were the original instructions included many years ago, but the only image of old instructions I found said nothing of the sort. At any rate, Let's get a record on my spare test turntable and get a reading of this record for the baseline static and give it a try. I'll be measuring the static in four locations moving up the record vertically using a label for guidance for consistency. I'll be recording the results for the baseline and the final result after testing. If you get a lot of records with paper sleeves, something I like to do to try to avoid surface abrasions is simply tear the record rather than pulling it out.
While this test is done on the turntable, I'm getting different results for the baseline static when measured in my hand versus on the turntable. It is much higher held in hand, therefore I'm going to use that as our baseline and I'll also record the result afterwards as well. 4.5, no that's a 5, let's call that a 5, a 7, a 3.5, and, and a 7. I'll be using these three corners and then in a sensor. <music> Lastly, taking the trigger away from the record and releasing it slowly. Let's see what our result is. We're still at 5.4, 7.5, 9, and 4.5. This has gone up rather than down. A very shocking result is I've done this prior and I've had positive results. Let's measure that on the turntable and see. This is much lower. 0 0.07, 0 0.3, 0 0.08, and 0.2. So we have conflicting results. I'm gonna measure that one more time off the turntable to make sure, trying to hold it in my hand rather than placing it close to my body is that might be an effect. Two, five, eight, and four. That's not a very good result, but let's log it anyway. The second method which has some popularity is the four squeeze method. For this, you need to hold the record in your hand. No setting it on a turntable or a flat surface because apparently that will reduce the effectiveness. Then you squeeze the zero stats trigger four times at the center of the record at a distance of about eight inches. The time of the squeeze is said to be six to 10 seconds. Let's take a reading from the new record and see what we get. Almost nine, eight and a half, eight, seven, strapping. Call that eight, seven and a half, 13, 14, and it jumped. That was a negative 20. Four squeezes at about eight inches at about five seconds. Point two, point four, point three, and point eight. These are very large results. Coming from a 20 down to a 0.8 is astronomical. So far, that is by far the leading method. Next, I'm going with the spinning method. This is very akin to what the current box lists as the instructions, only I am to use it while the record spins on the turntable, and I'm supposed to take up to five seconds to squeeze and release the trigger. Let's get a reading. Fourteen, eleven, twelve. So fourteen, twelve, fifteen, sixteen. The information online did not specify how many squeezes of the trigger I should do, so we're going to stick with four for all tests. now 
I'll have five, seven, five, five. That looks very inefficient. Finally, I'm going to try to adhere to the current printed on the box instructions to see what happens. It makes no mention if the object, as it doesn't mention record specifically at all, should be in hand or on a surface, so I'm simply going to place the record right on my desk. We'll take a reading and we'll see what happens. For the last record, unfortunately I didn't have any more brand new ones, so I had to resort to something I found in the bargain bin at the Salvation Army. If you grew up in the 80s, you know who this is and what this is, but for 50 cents I couldn't pass up the laugh, so I picked it up. It has been open, obviously, because this is from the 80s. This is a very old album. However, it's been sitting in this, as you can see, yellowed, tarnished sleeve, which we can go ahead and open now, and we'll test for static. Ten and a half, eleven, ten and a half, ten and a half, twelve and a half, fifteen. There we are. Let's take our final measurements and see what we got. Nine, seven, six, six. That's awful. I'm sure there are variables that I might have missed and for that, I apologize. But I can only think of so much on my own. I need your help. If I've missed something, please let me know in the comments. Our comment section is thriving and growing, as is the channel, which I appreciate. So make sure you hit like on this. As for the results, it would seem that the best by far was method number two, the four squeeze method. That would be what I would recommend to somebody to hold the record in their hand, fire it eight inches away four times slowly, and that's going to give you the best results. Now you know when you're looking online and you see experts telling you that you're doing it wrong or you don't know what you're talking about when using the Milti, you have empirical proof or as close as I could get. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to next time.